it's been revealed by the UK government that by 2035 they're hoping to phase out uh, the, the production of new uh, Vin Diesel vehicles and what that's going to mean is that Vin Diesel films by 2035 they're going to be very scarce um, but I think it's pretty clear that we're already on that trajectory um, and if anything I think we can bring that deadline forward uh, obviously. Um, so I've gone back in time at the start of this video you saw me playing a tune called This Is For Albert by Wayne Shorter. Uh, I first heard this tune on Mike Marino's live stream uh, a couple of months back and I've had it on my phone since and thought this week I wanted to learn something new so that's why I've done this tune. I played it hopefully okay in the intro but I just wanted to talk today. Uh, the chord melody for that will be available on Patreon. Uh, I don't want to talk about that too much right now. What I wanted to talk about is how to practice the stuff that comes after that chord melody. So, so I always say start off with the melody. for me is the more important thing so I try and build up chords that allow me to still play that melody and keep the rhythm hopefully or well, that's the goal anyway once you've done that stuff it comes to stage where you're going to be wanting to solo over it now by the way I used to start off just soloing over stuff so I'd find like the absold lead sheets or whatever and just play over the changes and stuff and I think that's probably not the, the best way to start with this stuff so I would suggest that your time might be better spent learning the melody and learning the chords so that at least you're learning a jazz tune before you go into this other stuff where you're kind of practicing how you might solo over that jazz tune because it kind of makes it a lot easier to solo over it anyway if you actually have the touchstone of what the original tune sounds like and hopefully in the process of learning the tune you might have heard you know Wayne Shorter solo over it for example or the trombone player I don't know who that is on this tune could probably look that up and drop it in here but he plays a really cool solo and you can hear strategies that people are using and maybe pick those apart so if there was a, a tune like footprints for example another Wayne Short tune which I've covered on the channel there's a section in there where there's kind of vague harmony or complicated harmony so I was listening back to that at the time and listening for strategies that the other soloists on that tune might use to get through those changes to try and better understand their mindset and how they're thinking of them since they're the people that kind of played it first. So that's why I think you should check out the originals first and that's why I think you should learn that melody and harmony first and then come to this stage. So one really useful thing to do, I think, is to play triad to the whole thing. So just pick one type of triad. So for instance, this is, uh, we've got a root on the D string and we're playing the uh, the triad or the arpeggio from the root, so. And then play that kind of in time through the whole tune. So you might have uh, for the start of this, a G major triad, then a A flat major triad, then an A minor triad, and then a diminished triad, and then a C minor triad, and then a B flat. And then I think, uh, although I just, change the string positions and then an A flat and then a D oh dear. so yeah playing one group of triads through the entire tune so do it with like a moving initially don't forget you've also got that whole thing to do with the root on the A string so Then also you could do inversions of that. So this is going to be something that I'm going to find tricky right now. So um, so you 
have a G in first inversion there, then an A flat in first inversion, then a C in uh, an A minor in first inversion, and then a first inversion of that, and then C minor, and then a B flat in first inversion. first inversion and then a D in first inversion so you see the idea with that and do that across each string kind of section and do this as slowly as you like to start with then naturally you might want to try and make those into um, sevens Keep in mind kind of the, the way that the bar, the chords fall in the bar. So for instance, you might have two changes for a bar. So you might have a two, five, one. Um, keep that in mind and try and keep that harmonic rhythm. And I guess you probably guess what you might want to try and do next is to join them up kind of without jumping all over the fretboard. So. Um, I haven't done this for a while, but this is what I'm going to be doing today to try and get this tune under my fingers, is basically what I'm saying to you. So not only is it helping you to work on triads, but it's also helping you to work on that subconscious kind of map of the tune. So. try employing different strategies so you might say I'm going to ascend a triad then descend the next triad then ascend and then and mix that up a bit in that way you might decide that you want to do uh, longer bigger arpeggios of triads skipping some harmonic changes in the middle of that but you get the idea uh, and then the same kind of idea again you could do uh, and then you could do you know inversions of that as well so all of these things are particularly tricky especially when you start doing them but I think you'll find them pretty useful any time you spend doing this. Um, I used to do it quite a lot and uh, it's quickly quite taxing on the brain, particularly if you try and um, make yourself kind of really strict to only do the thing that you're trying to, to do. So, you know, if you're saying that I only want to play a second inversion of all the chords, then that becomes quite tricky because you've got to then think of you know, I'm, I'm needing to start this arpeggio from the fifth each time, if that makes sense. So, you know, for example. That kind of thing. So a simpler version of that exercise, but I think a very useful one is to try and play the bass line. Basically, that is kind of, kind of, almost like a root exercise. But obviously, a good basis doesn't just target the root all the time, and you can do some kind of walking stuff. And then I think one other useful exercise is to try and play like uh, a fragment of the scale for every uh, note and every bar. So, for example, you might start off from the root of each bar. This is one particular I'm gonna to have to practice. Uh, uh, I'm thinking this is like a C harmonic minor. So you could 
do that with whatever amount of notes that you like. Uh, for instance, I think there's um, plenty of people would recommend doing one, three, five as an exercise. So. And again, you could start this off jumping around the neck and then try and tidy it up. So those are kind of the things that I might use to try and um, better learn a tune and get a deeper understanding of it and then for instance like I say if there's parts of the tune that are difficult like footprints I might specifically plan something to play over that and at least try and hit that occasionally in my practice so that I've got um, an idea that works over a bit that is tricky um, so for instance uh, over that part um that chord I'm possibly gonna write something in the C harmonic major kind of context and that will take me uh, through that section of the tune so that I've got something that I can play over there that I'm confident will work oh and one other really useful one this is a Kurt Rosenwinkel uh, idea so you take the root and third and then fifth and seventh and you play them separately but autumn leaves if we're playing in G you might end up with something that sounds a bit like this So that exercise is also really useful. So those are the things that I think you might want to try doing if you're learning any jazz tune. But yeah, thank you for stopping by. The chord melody sheet will be up for, um, this is for Albert, and I'll put up the backing track as well. And now I'm going to spend my morning practicing the tune. And so hopefully the start of this video would have been okay. Uh, if this was useful at all, if you could like and subscribe, I'm trying to kind of do stuff which interests me and you know talk about the stuff that I've practiced and I think is worth practicing and so hopefully it's sort of useful. Thank you for stopping by. Cheers!